Good morning. My name is Leon Philbert. I want to thank you for viewing Choosing Christ broadcasts. This program was designed with you in mind to inform, edify, strengthen, and build you up in the word of the Lord. And so I'd like to invite you to join me in today's lesson as we examine God's word. Today's lesson is entitled, it's a question that I'm asking. The question is this, is heaven still your number one goal? Is heaven still your number one goal? Now, that question was, you know, posed in a, in a session. And, you know, I, I thought I would just develop on that question. Because, you know, we have a number of challenges, number of things that, you know, we are, we are pressed all right, to go after. And I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, is heaven still your number one goal? I want to let you know that heaven is the destination. Salvation is the journey. Right. So we are on a journey. And so when we think about heaven, heaven is the end result. Right. When we get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. But we need to be thinking, how are we going to get to heaven? Right. And, and sometimes we need to ask ourselves, you know, what will prevent us from getting to heaven. So th those are some of the things I would hope to discuss with you in this, in this session as we examine this lesson. Is heaven still your number one goal? I'm reminded of the chorus that we often sing, no, you can't get to heaven without salvation. All right. But there are some other things that we need to keep in mind that we cannot get to heaven without. And so as we go through the lesson, I want to bring to your attention some of the things that we cannot get to heaven without. One of those things being the preaching of the gospel of Christ. The preaching of the message of Christ. You know, when I think about, about heaven and going to heaven, I cannot help but understand that before I can even get to heaven, I must first hear about the message that tells us about heaven. All right. That is the, the good news concerning Jesus. All right. Now, if you were to do an, uh, a little check, a test, all right, you find that we are often bombarded, today in particular, with message concerning Wealth, message concerning healing, message concerning prosperity, and all other kind of lessons. And how often do we hear about the gospel, the good news about Jesus, the message that can really save our souls? And you find that a lot of people are more into this message of prosperity. This message about health and this message about well-being. Right. And, and no doubt it's, it's important. It's important for us to know and to understand what God has promised us and will bless us with. All right. But we are dealing with the bottom line. When it's all over and done, will heaven be the goal? Right. Will I be able to say, you know, or oh, here said to me, blessed are thou. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in to the kingdom that was prepared for you. So I'm asking you, as we think about heaven, as we think about going to heaven, the goal, the destination, what we need to keep focus in our minds, what we need to keep in front of us is this message that Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, this message that will tell us about Jesus and about his love for us 
what he was willing to give up on our behalf. It is good news. Paul in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jews first and also to the Greek. And he said in verse 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So this message all right, of, about righteousness, about how we can be made right with God, must be preached to us. We must hear about that message and what is entailed in that message and the facts concerning the message. And the facts are simple. It talks about the love of God. It talks about the sacrifice of Christ. And it talks about the promise of salvation or redemption through his blood. Christ died for us. And so we must never forget in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Again, the facts are laid out. All right. Paul said he, he delivered unto them what he had received. All right. How that Christ died, how that he was buried, and how he rose again the third day. And he was seen by many. All right. The facts are there. All right. The facts, the evidence is there. And so we need to believe and we need to accept the message, the gospel message that was once delivered unto the saints. Is heaven still your number one goal? Do you want to hear, as I said before, enter in, thou good and faithful servant? Or depart from me, I never know you. If heaven is our goal, then we are going to be interested in the things that are going to help us to enter into heaven. The journey is about salvation. Salvation is the journey. It's telling us how we can qualify to make heaven our home. The second thing is that you, you, you cannot get to heaven without is faith in Christ Jesus. Faith in Christ Jesus. And I, you know, the Bible tells us, Jesus said, you know, um, we are going to die in our sins if we don't believe that he is the Messiah. And he is the Christ. He is the anointed one. He was the one that was ordained by God to deliver us from our sins. And when you stop and you examine what it means to have faith in Christ Jesus. We're talking about believing in what he said, the things that he taught while he was upon the earth. Mm -hmm. He went about teaching, confounding the, the elders and the scribes and the Pharisees in his time, even as a young boy. All right. You remember the Sermon on the Mount? He took the disciples on the, on the Mount and he began to teach them about all sorts of things pertaining to the kingdom of heaven, pertaining to spiritual life. You remember that Nicodemus came to him by night and said, you know, teacher, you have to be a man from God. Because no one can do the things that you do unless God be with you. So, we need to believe in what Jesus said while he was on earth. He said that he was the son of God. He said that he was the master teacher. He was Lord. He was Christ. He's God. We need to believe in Jesus. Everything about Jesus that the Bible revealed unto us. And we, we need to be in a position to defend what the Bible says concerning Jesus. Some are going to try to twist the scriptures. Some are going to try to change the scriptures. But those of us who are believers in Jesus are going to stand by the words of Jesus. 
stand what, by what is recorded in the Holy Scriptures and defend it to the end. But not only must we believe in what he said, but we must also believe in what he did. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He was healing the sick. He raised the dead. He restored sight to the blind. He fed those that were hungry. He comforted the brokenhearted. Right. And so, as we read and we study about the life of Christ, it must generate this faith in him that yes, he is the one that we must put our trust in. And we must put our life in, our, a life in his hands, in his, in his care. Too many a times we turn over our lives to the minister, the preachers, the pastors, the elders, and everybody else. And Jesus is not the one who is in charge of our lives. We prefer to go and to do what pastors say, what church say, what this one say. And when we read in the word what Jesus said, we find some explanation, some way to do away with what he said. Because somebody else told us something different. I want to challenge you this morning. Right. If heaven is still your number one goal, right, that you must put your trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. Don't let anything or anyone come before him. We must love him with our all, our everything, if we're going to make heaven our home. Faith in Jesus Christ means that we are prepared to make a turnaround, to give up our own life, our own ways, and to follow the prescribed teaching of Jesus. That's called repentance. Repentance begins in the mind. And it is demonstrated or it's fulfilled by our actions. So one can tell when you have repented based upon what they see you are doing that he wasn't doing before. You can see a change in your life. So Jesus said, I tell you the truth, but you shall all perish if you don't repent. In the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 13, the Bible gives, tells us that you know, there's going to come a day when God is going to judge this world in righteousness by the man whom he had raised from the dead. And because of that, he has commanded all men everywhere to repent, to change their lives. All right. You know, we're hearing about all sorts of Abuse taking place with children. All sorts of abuse taking place in the home. You know, and, and when I hear these news, I, know, I would hate to think that numbered among the perpetrators are those who profess Christianity and those who profess to be followers of Christ. Right? Because in no way can a person be claiming to follow Christ and to be doing things that is contrary to his teaching, to his ways. He tells us that we must love our enemies. All right. Loving your enemies goes far beyond because if we're going to love our enemies, it means that we must love our family. It means we must love our children and our wives and those who are closest to us. Not hurt them to love them. And so one cannot be professing that they are following Christ and doing harm to their loved ones. A change must come about. 
All right. And that change will, will come from within us based upon the teachings that we have received from Christ. Faith in Christ means that we have reached a point whereby we are ready to confess him as Lord with our mouths and with our lips. He said, whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. And so, we cannot shy away. We cannot pretend not to be followers of Christ, see, um, secret disciples. But we must be willing to let everybody know that we believe in Jesus, we are followers of Jesus, and we are demonstrating it with our lips and by our lives. The bold confession. That, that confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's ruler of our lives. And when we make that confession, no doubt people are going to be looking to see if what we say is how we live. They're going to be looking at us. So we are going to be, be in the spotlight. Um, oftentimes people say, and, they, and this person said they're a Christian. Right. It means that they are looking at us. Uh, they are listening to us. And we need to make our country, our place where we live, a better place. If every Christian, everyone who professed the name of Christ, would live in accordance to the teachings of Jesus Christ, I believe this place could be a better place. I believe that we can be a force to be reckoned with. When, when, when the evil and the, and, and the wickedness is concerned, and we can stand up and we can say, no, we are not going to allow that to happen where we are. All right. We're going to protect the weak and the innocent. We're going to stand up for injustice. You know, we're going to do the things that we're supposed to do. All right. I believe that we can make this place a better place. As I said before, salvation is a journey. It's that journey on the way to heaven. And when we think about heaven, heaven is the destination. It's the goal. But how do we get there? We get there through obedience. Through obeying what Christ has laid out for us, what the apostles had laid out in the, in the scriptures for us to follow. And by so doing, we can ensure that we'll make heaven our home. Baptism. No, we can't get to heaven without baptism. And I don't know how much of this is taught. I don't know how many, how many people who have been baptized know why they were baptized, understand the significance or the importance of baptism. But again, a lot of people know that baptism is important, that, that you need to be baptized. But do they understand why? Right. And has it been pointed out to them in the scriptures that unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven? Plain words. Right. Here are one of the things that we have to do in order to make heaven our home. We need to be baptized. And if I can throw in this explanation biblically because there is a biblical baptism there is a baptism that is in accordance with the new testament practice all right and not until we have been baptized biblically can we say that we have been truly baptized so in the book of mark Chapter 16, 15, and 16, Jesus gave the, the instructions or the command to the disciples to go and preach and teach and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. In the book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse 38, the, in, again the command was to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. 
and the gift of the Holy Spirit would be given to them, to their children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16, of verse 18, we read where Peter says, you know, as in the time of Noah, where eight souls were saved by the ark from water, he says, even so the like figure whereon to baptism did also now save us. It's not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but it's an answer of a good conscience towards God. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that we cannot get to heaven without the preaching of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus Christ. But I'm also saying that we can't get to heaven without faith in Jesus, actually obeying and practicing the things that he had taught us. But I also want to go one step further and add that we cannot get to heaven without the transport that is going to take us to heaven, which is the church that Jesus Christ promised to build. In Matthew chapter 16, and from about verse 13, he asked the question, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And different answers were given, but he turned to the disciples and said, well, Who do you say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said to Peter, Blessed are thou, Simon, but Jonah, for flesh and blood, had not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say unto thee, that thou art Peter, upon this rock, upon this confession, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church, as is explained in the New Testament, as we read about it in the New Testament, the Bible tells us plainly that Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. And he is head of the body, the church the firstborn from the dead. We read of these passages in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, Colossians 1, and verse 18, that Christ is head of his church. Now there cannot be more than one head. All right. And Christ is the head of his church. There may be heads in other churches. All right. But when it comes to Christ's church, the church that we read about in the scriptures, Christ is the head of that church. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 47, the Bible tells us that they were praising God and having favor with all the people. All right. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were, who were being saved. I'm saying to you that you cannot get to heaven unless you believe in and you are a part of the New Testament church. The church that Christ established. The church that he purchased with his own blood. The church that he has gone and he said, I'm coming back to receive unto myself his bride. The ark of safety. So just as in the time of Noah, the ark was the only means to preserve the righteous, and all who were outside of the ark perish. I'm saying if heaven is still your number one goal, you would want to investigate. You would want to make sure. Right. When it comes to the New Testament church, that I am a part of the church that Christ established with his blood. Again, we sing the chorus. No, you can get to heaven without salvation. S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Shout it out loud and clear. You can get to heaven without salvation. So, not only salvation will include the preaching of the gospel. 
It would include faith in Jesus Christ. It would include all of those things that we mentioned. Faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. And it would also include being a part of the New Testament church. The church that we read about in the New Testament. The church that Christ promised to build and he built on the day of Pentecost. He established on the day of Pentecost. And the only so we can be sure uh, that we are part of that New Testament church is by examining, examining the scriptures and going in accordance to what the scripture revealed. I want to thank you for taking time out. Uh, I trust that what I have said would have been encouraging to you, but more so that it would have been in accordance to the word of God, the scriptures. And once I know that I have not misused, misapplied the scriptures, but I am okay. All right. And I encourage you to examine always what I have said. Uh, go through the passages and see that, that I have not taken them out of context. And in that way, you can be blessed. And if I am in error, you can, you can also correct me. Once again, I want to thank you for taking time out. I encourage you to visit us at the corner of Canby Number 2 and Mount Pleasant Main Road, Church of Christ Building. We meet there every Sunday to worship every first day of the week. We have our Bible studies on Sunday morning and Wednesday evening from 7.15 you're encouraged to come and be a part of our services. Um, if you have questions or you have concern, you can get in contact with us and we'll be more than willing to address your needs. Until then, goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.